Hello, but this is Character More. Let's play Undertale: The Genocide Run. The magic number is thirteen. He he offers to spare you at attack number thirteen. That's significantly lower than I was really hoping for. Also, I totally didn't do what I said I was gonna do and uh, check to see if uh, when he does that attack. Oh. I did at least have time for a bathroom break, so that's the thing. Also, after doing the spare thing, he has a dialogue chain, so that'll be fun. So, here's the thing I don't know. Is he like the flower where he has the ability to save and load himself, or is he just aware of that somehow? I actually do like what the Genocide Run does with him, that he's always been this, this character who just kind of mysteriously, relaxedly wanders the game being a lazy piece of crap, and yet he's always ahead of you, he's always in the area, you know? Although, to be fair... These monster-infested things aren't monster-infested to us. It'd be like, for example, a skeleton trying to walk through New York City. Oh, there's so many monsters here. No, they're just New Yorkers. Don't worry, it's very easy to make that mistake. <laughs> Says the guy who's never been to New York. But fuck it. I think New Yorkers would enjoy that joke. Oh, yeah. It's fine. Almost heavy, buddy. Almost. But I love the fact that the reason he's such a goofball is because he's so just ferociously powerful, you know? He's kind of got that whole Goku Optimus Prime thing where he just... a lot, Or more Optimus Prime than Goku, where he just... He's the real powerhouse and he doesn't fight very much. Partly because he doesn't have to and mostly because he doesn't want to. You know? I think it's funny that his brother supposedly ends so many uh, genocide runs out of sheer kindness or whatever. I'm like, no, I don't get that. I mean, yes, I get the emotional appeal of this game. I really do. But the thing is, I haven't had very many emotional reactions to this game, and it's not because it's not getting me. It's just I have a different threshold than most players. I played some brutal games. I don't mean brutal hard, I mean brutal emotionally, like The Walking Dead. I mean, if you have not seen it, go back and watch The Walking Dead Season 1, Episode 5. The whole thing, really. But that game did things to me. I mean, I'll tell you right now, the reason I don't have a lot of commentary during the credits is because I'm trying not to cry audibly. When my dumbass really could have just turned on the mic and made as much noise as I really wanted to make. So. so yeah, that game was emotionally devastating. To the point where I've said several times during the recording of 2, I don't want to do this. I remember what the last game did. I know what it's going to do to me now. I don't want to go through that, but I've already said I would. And so, yes, it does get me to a certain degree that I'm killing characters that were very friendly and nice and charming and loving and all that. And that sucks, and it's sad. But at the same time, I can also compartmentalize to the point where it's something I have to do. You know? Because compartmentalization is something I'm kind of famous for doing. I just kind of... If anything is currently beyond my means to do anything about, I just shove it aside and deal with it later, you know? Oh god, I wish he just did this attack all the time, because it kills me! No, I just wish he did that attack all the time, because then I'd never need to heal. Unless I'm an idiot. He's almost there, too. That was bullshit. Okay, okay. 
Calm, relax, yawn, flex your fingers. That's another thing I don't like doing. That's another reason I don't like playing computer games that much, is you have to flex your fingers a whole lot more than you do with a controller. Because you use more of them. You know? Like my thumbs are very well exercised from all the years of controlling. But the rest of them, not so much. I mean, yeah, my index fingers get a workout, so they're not so bad, but the other three on the hand, kind of useless. And I don't do as much with them, like I use maybe two or three, maybe one or two. Like I use the middle finger, sometimes I use the ring finger, like right now I'm using that for right, etc. But uh, it's also the positioning of the hand is so different from controllers, so my hands get all need to be flexed. And if you're wondering why I'm talking about so much extra bullshit instead of the game, it's because I have done this fucking battle so many times I've run out of shit to say about it. You know? Take it! Yeah, I've done this battle so many times I've run out of things to say. I kind of wish he was still keeping track of how many times he's killed me. I also am glad he's not, because he's downed a really quick text, and I'm going through this so fast that I don't want to hear this long-ass speech every time we fight. It's bad enough that I have to go through all of his dialogues every time I swing at him. He does make a good point, though. Why does no one ever lead with his strongest attack? You know? I love how when I first started doing this fight, this was so, just so much devastating and all that. Now it's just kind of casual. Just the thing I'm doing. Remember, I said the time I can make it through that unscathed would be the run. I didn't make it through it unscathed, but I didn't get hit by any of the blue ones. It was the white one that nailed me, so I'm counting that. This is going to be the run. I can feel it. I can taste it. Kind of tastes like airheads. Don't know why. Yeah. This is the run. I can taste it. But yeah, I love the fact that he's just this formidable warrior that just is such a goddamn goofball. Methinks the fish lady's been training the wrong skeleton brother. Derp! Shit, shit, shit! How about you ruin it, buddy? You ruined it! Ruined! Fuck it, this run's dead. I've screwed up way too many things in this run to even bother trying to save it anymore. I should have healed once in that run, and I just kept fucking healing. Okay, at some point I'm going to have to take this little plastic thing under my desk and set it up the way I want it. Please let this be the last Sans fight. Please. I'm hoping this will be one last video for Sans, then one video for the final bosses, and the endings and all that shit, and then a video just for my final thoughts and such. Yay, dead. And then that'll end this. I want to point out, I've got these things scheduled, and you already know this, but looking at my schedule, this episode, November 13th of 2017. Meaning, if I have like six more episodes, which I kind of hope I don't, just for the content and all, but if I were to have like six more episodes, this would carry me entirely through 2017. By itself. Well, after Dead Rising, of course, because Dead Rising drifts into that year.
But you know what I mean. Just this and Dead Rising together will get me through all of 2017 almost. Okay, that was me not paying attention. It's a thing that happens sometimes. You get used to it. Okay. How many people have honestly completed this? For that matter, how many Let's Players have completed this? I gotta wonder. I gotta know. I, I won't know. I don't really care enough to know, but I, this is not an easy time. Some upper tier shit right here. And I realize a lot of people don't even want this run just because it's excessively cruel. You know? But, uh, it's also incredibly hard. These two fights, man. Just, oh. I think a genocide run would be incredibly difficult to do on your first run just, just to know that you have to grind like that. I mean, the only way that I could see someone doing that on their first try without being told ahead of time is if they're just one of those people like, okay, I gotta make sure I'm ready for the boss. Just because I'm killing these enemies in one shot, you know. And then you'd get to a save point, it's like, oh, six more, you kill a guy, go back to the save point for whatever reason. Oh, five more, okay, what happens when I kill them all? Determination. Oh, okay. And then you just genocide your way through the game. And then I think some of the runs in that case would end on his brother just out of sheer ignorance. Oh, he's sparing me. Okay, I don't have to have this fight. You know? I really think it's funny that his brother was such a difficult fight when you're not fighting him back. But when you actually... Fuck, this not dead. But when you actually fight him, he goes down in one shot and doesn't even attack. I find that incredibly lopsided. I mean, I understand to a degree why it's that way, but I think it really should be the other way around. I think the bosses should be bosses. I think the bosses in the Genocide run should be at least as difficult as they are in the normal run, and they should be much easier if you just try to be friendly. You know? But I mean, I understand why they go down as easily as they do, because the whole game they're talking about how powerful a human soul is, and how powerful humans in general are, and all this fun shit, so... It makes sense that when a human uses their true power, monsters just don't have a chance. But it also begs the question, if a human child can do this, why would humans ever have been afraid of monsters in the first damn place? You know? when it apparently takes a rare, incredibly powerful monster to really pose a threat. I mean, I'm a fucking kid. A child. <laughs> Up until this fight was fighting with junk. Just let it happen. It's a bad run, just let it happen. I love the fact that I've gotten good enough of that opening segment that I can actually just say, nope, this run's done, because I took a single hit. Rather than just say, no, you survived it, that's what counts. It's the slalom that gets me. If I can get past that slalom, I'm good. It's very rare and usually interface-based if I fuck up the lasers. A little more common to fuck up the bone jump. <laughs> Yes, let us. I get hit by. It doesn't matter. It's not enough to count. I do like the theme, but I, I just, I'm so sick of it by now. I both like and hate that he gets really excessive later on in the fight. I really hate that he starts attacking me through my interface. Shit! And there went all the awesome I built up until this point. So yeah, basically if I can make it through his 13 attacks without needing to heal, I can heal as much as I need to. So 
that I've got that going for. The question is, can I make it through those 13 attacks without needing to heal? The funny thing is, I'll do it a lot faster if I don't heal. Because I won't have that extra turn of sit to sit on. Silly as that sounds. If I can make it through the first of the Frogger parts, I'll heal. So much for that. I love the fact that as soon as I decide, like, well, I can get to the halfway point so well, I'll just do the spare. First, it takes me like six more tries to get there. And then afterwards, I can't get there once. But yeah, it's kind of a thing. Nope, we're done. We're done. If I can't even make it past the bone jump, we're done. We're fucked. No, we're not doing it. That's not a run worth even trying to save. Staying positive. The thing I gotta wonder is if I had those last, that last level that I get off of him where I have the extra seven hit points, would I have beaten him by now? Would those extra seven hit points really have mattered in this run? Okay. Getting somewhere now. Also, I just now realized he copied his brother's blue attack. Or maybe his brother copied his blue attack. It's anyone's guess, really. Just keep trucking. Just keep on trucking, dude. Funny thing is, I think this would act well, the jumping parts would actually be harder if I was still red and the subject not subject to gravity. Because I don't think I could dip down fast enough at that point. Why do I keep botching that? The funny thing is, I don't even botch that on the part that I should, the part where I drop. I botch it on the jump. The part where I'm going up. How do you screw up a jump into a fall, but not a fall? I have to... Oh, Sand, you're driving me nuts, buddy. Look, just because I'm not obliging you by dying doesn't mean you can't, that you have to return the favor to me. Come on. Be a pal. Drop the fuck dead. Let me get on with my life. Please. But yeah, this, this totally brings in a focus why you run into him in the other two endings. I never ran him into the pa uh, passive descent because I skipped this room for whatever reason. I don't remember what my reasoning was at the time. I'm pretty sure I said it out loud, whatever the reasoning was. But uh, it shows why he's the final guardian before the king because, quite frankly, he's strong enough for the job. And, you know, he decides that hey, you, I don't need to worry about you. You're a good kid, kind of thing. Just take it. Just fucking take it. I don't care. Alright. Jump. 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 And punch the fuck out of it. Go all fight maximum on that. I 
I hate that you can only expand this via attacks, you can't just outlast them if you have to keep swinging. Which makes this really hard to do early on, until you've gone through him so many times. There we go. Finally! That took way more than it should have. You gotta figure, if I didn't have the power to warp time and space, he would win this fight. He would really, fully, legitimately beat me here. Of course, if I couldn't warp time and space, I'd have been stopped by the fish lady. Like I was many, many times. Let's bring up the point. Metaton's original body went down in a single shot. Metaton's performer body was impervious to harm. What the shit? You know, what did she make him out of? I'm not sure how that's supposed to make any sense. Okay, good. This one. Just give me, give me a string of 30 of those and we'll be fine. I love how most of my commentary at this point is, Well, I'm a retard! Alright, I think I've got one more. We're gonna heal. I think I get one more attack, and then I can heal as much as I need to. It doesn't help that that attack is basically an optical illusion. Nope, one more after this. Okay, cool. Now I can take a couple turns to recover. Yeah, I'm just gonna take a lunch break real quick. You fine with that? Cool. Yeah, I'm not falling for that again. I didn't technically fall for it the first time. Shit. I forgot he does that first.
Unless he stops that bottom attack, I'm not gonna win. Okay, so those can't actually kill me. Shit. Nineteen? Shattered. Okay. <sighs> I'm getting so close. Okay, good news. Those menu attacks can't physically kill me. Good to know. Bad news? <laughs> it still hurt. At least now I know what the wiki meant by and now he starts attacking you in the menu. Let's get straight to the point. You know, if I didn't have a stopwatch right next to me as I do this, I would wonder how long this fight actually takes, but I happen to know how long it takes because I have a stopwatch right next to me. I've been at this for 16 and a, or 26 and a half minutes. 16. Yeah, you kind of lost 10 minutes there, dude. Okay, okay, I can fucking do this. I'm so close. I got to 19 out of 25 attacks. I can do this. I just can't do it on this run. That's all. I'm not even tired, but this thing is making me tired. I woke up like four hours ago. Under normal circumstances, I wouldn't be sleepy, but this game is fatiguing me. He's wearing me down. Which is fair, he's, he's murdering the kid. But he's wearing me out. One. That last one was close. Seven. I dodged that. Nine. Three. 
really. Ten. Eleven. If I'd healed, I'd have made that. But I figured I could make it through one more. I figured wrong. Ah, oh, my back and neck, man. Ugh. Well, like I said, once I can kill him, I've only got another video or two and I'm done. Because nothing I've read shows that these are anything to really worry about. Let's... <sighs> See, the thing that gets me when he does the gravity slams where he throws me to the borders and I have to jump is sometimes when I'm up, I try to jump up instead of down. And that's why he gets me more often there. It's just I'm used to jump being up, even though I can do the side-to-side -side versions just fine for some reason. Guess it's the way my brain's wired. I don't even think I want to know how many times I've gone through this stupid fight. But knowing me, I'll find out somehow. I hit the beams. I hit the fucking beams. It's only fair, I had like three or four awesome runs in a row. Semi awesome. It's only fair that I get a couple shit runs too. Ooh, I gotta flex my fingers. I do that more on the computer than anything. Something I almost never have to do with a controller in my hands. Didn't go over far enough. The reason I keep killing myself on runs like this is because it's not worth wasting my time and yours. Watch me go through a run that it's painfully obvious after two seconds of that I'm not going to make. You know? 
Like, the ones where I spend more time healing than I do anything else, it's pretty clear that I'm not going to have enough in the tank to make it through. So if I can't pass that first stage with any decent amount of hit points, it's not worth trying the others. Like, for example, I fucked that one up real bad. I was doing just fine, and then I dropped it at the last second. I'm like, nope, we're done. Wasting time. I am so sorry about this, but this is a hard fight. And if you don't think it's a hard fight, buy the game yourself and prove it. I was actually having a talk with my friend Skinner. I'm like, oh, you need to get Undertale. He's like, no, I'm not getting Undertale. It's like 30 bucks. I'm like, no, it's like 10 bucks. I know, because I got on like a 20% off sale and it was like $7.50 or $6.50 or something. Like, well, what was, what was I thinking of? I'm like, I don't know. But it wasn't Undertale. This is a nice and cheap game. Most indie games are, which makes it very easy to support them, you know? Because you got to figure they're not taking up a lot of space. And then it's not that they're not taking up a lot of space, it's the fact that they're not picking up a lot of wallet. Alright, if on the next run I can't make it past that, then that's my cue that it's time to take a break. You know what, period, this next run is the last one for this video, because I need a break. I'm starting to get sweaty. I might even need a nap after these t fucking two hours of this bullshit that I've been doing probably right now. On this one fight. There we go. Okay. Apparently he finally slapped the retard out of me. One. Not surprised it took so long. Apparently there's a lot to slap out of him. He seems to have done it. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight.
11. No, that's it. That's all I've got the energy for right now. No, we're gonna do one more. Not as tired now as I was two seconds ago. That was that should have been the run. And then I stop uh, on the fucking the ones going the opposite directions are the ones that got me. And that's when the whole run fell apart. <laughs>